So I've gone back and forth in my mind quite a bit on how to do this video. For a while I thought, no, don't do it, it's not worth covering. Then I thought, yeah, cover it and be extremely hostile because some of the current industry marketing trends that are considered normal are just terrible, disingenuous and annoying. And now I've finally settled on tackling it with a more analytical approach and discussing the process of sponsored content and warning anyone who watches video game related material to be very careful when you see it appear. Before diving in, let's air out some dirty laundry here. A while ago, when my channel was probably a third of the size it is now, or less for that matter, I started opening up to the possibility of having sponsors for certain videos, or working with marketing agencies to get paid for coverage of certain topics. At the time, I didn't know how the process worked at all. The platform that I found which seemed to work the best was called FameBit, and through FameBit, I was able to connect with various campaigns that were offered and type out a proposal for them. Well, I filled out a few, no response. Filled out a few more, no response again. And this went on for a number of weeks until finally I had my first reply. The reply came from a t-shirt company called Thompson T, who offered me $180 to promote their products in three different videos during a pre-roll advertisement. I said I would be open to it, they shipped me some of the shirts, I liked the shirts, they seemed to be decent quality, and the experience was overall pleasant, so I agreed. We nailed down the timeline, one video immediately, another after about a month, and a third down the line after that. To me, it was a pretty good setup. Divide the original fee by three, that's $60 per video, which at the time was probably as much if not more than the video itself would make in YouTube ad revenue, so I had effectively doubled my earnings for three videos, gotten a couple of free t-shirts, and had a pleasant overall experience. At this point, I started to think, this is pretty simple, easy, and I don't really see anything wrong here. Why wouldn't I expand this and take on more sponsors? So I did just that, sort of. I applied to more campaigns, tried typing out different proposals, and eventually began to receive more responses. Soon, there was one about a mobile game from the Goosebumps franchise, which seemed pretty straightforward. Just a simple city builder game. I would show some gameplay, talk about how I liked Goosebumps when I was a child, which is true, by the way, I very much did like Goosebumps when I was a kid and reading the books, and then they would pay me. Here's the problem. This all happened a while before I became as vocal and outspoken as I am now against microtransactions and loot boxes, or predatory monetization in general. I had always had strong feelings, I just never made it a focal point of the content, but while I produced this particular piece of sponsored material, it became clear that the game was a perfect representation of a lot of the things that I disliked in the mobile game market. I had already agreed to the deal and did not feel so uncomfortable with the promotion as to pull the rug out and cancel. Keep in mind, at that time, this was a pretty big chunk of what I was making and it mattered quite a bit still. So I pushed forward with the resolution that the game was free and no one had to spend money if they didn't want to. So I produced the material, all went as planned, and I moved on with my life. Then, sometime later, came the one that really changed everything for me. I saw a game called Defiance 2050. The game was made by a company called Tryon Worlds. Tryon was also responsible for a game called Rift, back when MMORPGs were all the rage, and I actually really liked Rift and played a ton of it, and I figured it might be a good fit. I talked with them, agreed to a fee, and then commenced with a dedicated review. I opened the game, started playing, and immediately had a sense of familiarity. This was claimed as a huge new offering and revamp of the pre-existing Defiance game, but it was pretty much exactly the same as the old version. I explored, dug around, and then did my review, but in the back of my mind, something felt terribly wrong. I had been paid money, so I did not want to harshly criticize the game. I made some jokes about graphics, seeing as they claimed on their site that it had cutting-edge graphical textures and some other shit like that, but it was laughable at best, and it looked pretty bad. One of the core positives that originally drew me in was the fact that the game was free to play. That's fantastic in and of itself, but when I dug deeper, it turned out the monetization was less than ideal. The balancing left a lot to be desired, and the relaunch has really not been a positive thing for the dedicated community who had been previously supporting and playing the original version. All in all, I didn't have glowingly positive things to say, but I had been paid, and I felt like at least a slight sense of obligation to try and adjust my rhetoric so as to not clash too heavily with the sponsor themselves. I finished the video, made it public, and moved on with my life, but it never sat right with me. I was not proud of that content. It didn't feel genuine, and to this very day, I'm still unhappy with it. Problem is, when you do sponsored content, you can't delete the video for six months after it is uploaded. At least 
I think it's six months. It's been a while since I used Famebit. So I had to leave it there, even though I was almost borderline ashamed of it. Well, now it's been seven months since that review, so I am deleting the review and making a pretty firm commitment never to go down that road again. After the Defiance review over the subsequent weeks and months, there were a couple different sponsors here and there. A game discount site called Chrono.gg, where I could select from a calendar which games I wanted to cover, choosing very specifically to only cover games I had previously played extensively and had overwhelmingly positive impressions of, isolated from that sponsorship entirely. And in general, I tried to find sponsors that felt like a net positive for everyone involved, myself, viewers, and the sponsors as well. Unfortunately, that was exceedingly rare. Well, over time, the channel grew and is now triple some odd the size it was back when most of this occurred. During most of that time, I stopped looking for sponsors, focused on having the best message and quality I could, and everything felt pretty good. But at some point, fairly recently, a tipping point was reached. I now get practically bombarded with sponsorship emails or direct messages. Some are scams, one was blatantly a pyramid scheme, some are barely readable and have typos everywhere, and others are juicy as all hell, offer a shit ton of money, but require me to sell my soul to such an extent that I might never get it back. Because of this, I recently decided to sign on with a marketing agency called Influencer Stuff. What made their proposal stand out above the others was the non-exclusive nature of the contract and the specific language that made it clear they would present me with offers and I could reject or accept them based on how well they fit with full autonomy. I have not pushed ahead with them hardly at all. I asked them for a demo offer at some point to see how it all functions, but it's going to be a long and slow process with very few actual sponsorships accepted. Now you know the relationship that Upper Echelon has had and currently holds with various different sponsors. But the next important thing to discuss is what the normal process for high profile sponsorships often looks like. Most of the sponsorships I've ever been involved with are small companies, startups, individuals, or other entities looking to directly partner with some YouTubers who are relevant to their project or their field. But the much more common thing that has now started to occur in overwhelming abundance is marketing agencies reaching out for for large overarching campaigns. The latest example that really spurred me to make this video is Guardians of Ember. Now, I want to be clear, I am not disparaging the game itself. I know very little about it other than it is a top-down ARPG similar to Path of Exile or Diablo 3. But I received now multiple emails and messages from different marketing agencies regarding Guardians of Ember and their relaunch campaign. Quick update, literally as I typed this video script, I got another message in the Twitter DMs from someone I don't know or a marketing agency or whatever regarding, you guessed it, Guardians of Ember. The best example of what I want to discuss primarily is seen in this email. I have redacted the name and email address of the individual, but they are apparently a senior account executive at Kairos Media or however you say the name. Hey, Upper Echelon Gamers, we have partnered up with GameForge and are now bringing you the opportunity to work and collaborate with us on the game Guardians of Ember. For more information on Guardians of Ember, click here, yada yada. What are we looking for? We are looking to secure one times dedicated videos playing Guardians of Ember. We will be able to provide you with a dedicated video brief, which has all the talking points we would want covered, as well as some in-game codes to make your gaming experience a lot better. YouTube live dates, 27th of April, 2019, that's in, in a while here. More information, uh, would you be able to come back to me with a price for one times dedicated YouTube video? Based on this, I will present this to the client and secure the best price possible. I look forward to hearing from you, kind regards. The important paragraph is in the center and reads, we will be able to provide you with a dedicated video brief which has all the talking points. What this essentially means is we are buying access to your audience in order to say our words through your mouth so that the viewers get the right impression that we want them to have and buy the game. Also, the worst part reads, as well as some in-game codes to make your gaming experience a lot better. That very clearly shows me that they are going to give me some of the microtransactions or bonus items or special loot so that I have a fun time when in reality, average players will likely have a bunch of extra garbage to purchase just to have the same similar level of fun. I want to be very clear, 
The problem isn't necessarily Guardians of Ember itself and its development team. The problem is usually the marketing agencies to whom they outsource the promotion to. This is not the only agency that reached out either. Another one was called Hero, and I actually sent a proposal a while ago before knowing what they were actually expecting, because in its most basic form, sure, why wouldn't I want to review a top-down ARPG? I love Path of Exile, but upon further investigation, they don't want a review, they want a talking head. This isn't the only example, this is just the current one spamming my inbox. It happens all the time. And the basic format is a game developer or publisher, often even very large AAA games, hire numerous marketing agencies with a list of talking points, and then those marketing agencies attempt to secure the cheapest and most effective sponsorships wherein they blast their pre-scripted sound bites to the largest audience possible. A lot of people may be wondering right about now, what's wrong with that? In truth, advertising happens all the time, but when you watch an ad on TV or before a video, you know it's an advertisement. You are fully aware of what it was designed to do and why it exists. Well, the idea of sponsored reviews and sponsored content on YouTube in general is much more devious. It is not as upfront. And yes, creators are required to disclose that they are sponsored as per FTC regulations, but it's not the same as watching an obvious advertisement. The sad truth is that it's often not the creator's own words. It's predetermined talking points with an artificially constructed segment of gameplay made to unrealistically represent the game and spike sales, but it gets passed off as the creator's own opinion. There are exceptions to this, and if I accept sponsorships in the future, it will be a much more straightforward format, where at the beginning or end of a video, I will say, here is a sponsored segment advertising X, Y, or Z service. But those sponsorships will likely be for hardware or unrelated software that is not actual games. The problem of paid content in the gaming industry is that a lot of it is often so nebulous that it crosses the line into blatantly misleading territory. When a creator says, this is sponsored by this, that, or the other, it is not obvious how deep that sponsorship runs. The specifics are never made available to the viewer. Were they just paid to play the game, or were they given an actual script? Another example that ascends up the ranks of channel size on YouTube is Lords Mobile, a very popular mobile game. It did a huge marketing push and paid large creators to do a segment where they played the game. And played has huge air quotes around it. Because all the creators had identical gameplay, said pretty much identical things, but passed it off as them actually playing and personally enjoying the game. Now, I want to be clear here. None of these people or parties involved are actually doing anything that is strictly speaking wrong or against any laws whatsoever. But the problem is that sponsored content is a very broad strokes phrase that can mean anything from I got paid a couple hundred dollars and shipped a few t-shirts, which I wore and liked a lot and now I'm telling you about a cool discount for similar shirts, all the way over to here is a regurgitated and falsified script that has nothing to do with what I actually believe or how the game or product legitimately functions. But you don't know that, so joke's on you. The point of this video is to warn everyone that when you see the words sponsored content, especially when it pertains to a game itself, be very skeptical of what you hear. It certainly does not mean that it is de facto false or all manufactured lies built to trick you into wasting money, but it easily could be. And the moment you see sponsored content pertaining to a playable video game, find a bunch of alternative sources that are not sponsored and quadruple check if you really do want to buy something or try it out. I'm not brand safe anymore, and those are very specific words there that are used within the industry all the time. Brand safe meaning they pay you and they know that you will say only nice things about their game or their product. Videos like this basically guarantee that most brands will just flat out avoid me, probably in perpetuity, but I'm okay with that because of the current confusing atmosphere of some sponsorships in general, which is really detrimental to the health of the overall industry. I'd rather be able to speak my mind and believe what I say rather than get fed talking points and turn into a mindless extension of some random marketing agenda. That's it though. Again, this kind of phenomenon is not a 100% certainty. Sponsored content that retains its autonomy and quality can absolutely exist, but I would advise being very skeptical when you see it as a default reaction. If you want to support the channel, check out the links down below. We have social gaming communities, various groups, merch, and more, but I'll cut it there and stop rambling. Thank you all for watching, as always, and have a nice night.